Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. My name is Doreen Guma, and welcome to TimeToPlay.com Empower Half Hour. Uh, so, Time to Play did start as my midlife crisis project, and I've kind of put it into good use to try to help all of our people. People helping people is our philosophy here, and today we have Mary Simmons, who is a certified professional human resource professional. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. And Mary works uh, for Portnoy Messenger Pearl and Associates, which is a uh, human resource labor relations consulting firm. And um, she's been doing this for 25 years. And why I asked her to be part of Time to Play and professional resource on Time to Play was that when you're a business owner, it's very important to comply with human resource situations because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you don't. And sometimes hiring people, whether you're a small business or a big business, it, it might be better to use a firm like Portnoy Messenger or Pearl & Associates. So that's why I invited uh, Mary to be part of this. And um, today we're actually not focusing on the operations of an organization, but we're going to focus on how to get a job in a tough economy. And I want to start with a question uh, that you can answer, Mary. Sure. Is it really a tough economy? Is it is it really tough for a person who's really qualified to work? Is it really tough for them to find a job? Well, I, that's a really good question to ask me in particular because part of my responsibilities at Portnoy Messenger and Pearl is to do outplacement for organizations that are downsizing and to do recruitment for companies that are adding to staff or replacing employees. And as of this year, 2013 already is looking like a very good year and things are turning around because I have many more recruiting jobs than I have downsizing jobs. And I really think that this year, if job seekers do their due diligence and spend the time on their time on their job search, that they will find positions that are good paying and challenging as well. Well, this is really very good news because in the news and in the good morning, Michael, Michael uh, Waterman, who is our makeup and beauty uh, expert and my um, co-host, I guess, so to speak, on the (laughs) Empower Half Hour. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. So Michael has joined us. Um, Anyway, in our media, you mostly will hear that it's unemployment, unemployment. So how do we start to combat that in our minds, um, you know, to be more positive in our job search. And we want to just kind of talk about things that we could do to help us along in that. So what's your first recommendation, Mary? I think there is a lot of competition. And now that the economy is turning around, you have a secondary issue in that individuals, a lot of individuals, out there are underemployed. So what that means is when the economy was really, really bad four years ago, they were taking positions that were 50%, 25% of their prior salaries and in positions that are lower than what their expertise qualifies them to do. Now that the economy is getting better, not only do you have the individuals that are out of work looking for employment, but you have the underemployed individual saying, okay, I've stuck it out for these four tough years. Now I'm going to look for a new position that does give me the salary that I should be earning. So you really have to set yourself apart. You have to identify skills and core competencies that are valuable in your industry. For example, if you're a manufacturing manager, and you have your lean certification, it might be something that's listed at the bottom of your resume under skills. That's something that if you see on a lot of ads for positions that you're qualified for, probably needs to be moved up to the summary portion of your resume, which is at the top of your resume, and should be mentioned in your cover letter as to how you're utilizing that certification to save companies money, do things more efficiently, and do things faster. 
That's very, very good information. Now, question. A lot of things are online now, correct? Is is yes. there still – now, I haven't applied for a job in a really long time, so um, forgive yeah, me for, for my you. ignorance in this. <laughs> well, what – is your recommendation as far as, like, if you have this resume or if you do have, you know, a cover letter, are we still mailing these things in or is everything online? And sometimes they have online applications because my kids have filled that out, which doesn't necessarily give you room to embellish as we used to. I remember, you know, buying really nice folders and really good stationery and putting all this whole package together. What do you what do you suggest? Well stated for that? as as a marketing person, well stated, Doreen, that you would want the bells and whistles. But to be honest with you, from a recruiting standpoint, less is more for me. I want concise information because don't forget when I look at a resume, I'm probably looking today, for example, I have ten job openings. I'll probably be looking at uh somewhere two hundred to three hundred resumes. I give them each five seconds. If I really like wow. it, I give it ten seconds. So what the key to the online portion, let me answer that first, is that you must have keywords that are related to your industry multiple times on your resume. Because as a recruiter, when I search online for a resume, I put in keywords and the the ATS system, the applicant tracking system, that tracks those resumes where you've, uh, you know, put your resume, be it career builder, monster, et cetera, will then sift through all the resumes and give me the ones that have those keywords in it. So if I go back to my example of manufacturing manager, which I happen to have an opening for in Hopog right now, they're really looking for somebody with hands-on experience. And yes, the lean certification would be very valuable. So that's why I'm saying that lean certification, you want to mention it more than once. And you also want to say the word manufacturing more than once and management more than once in your resume. So you Mm -hmm. should have very concise bullet points under that position stating what you did in reference to manufacturing, what you did in reference to managing, and then your resume will get searched much easier through Career Builder, Monster, all of those sites, even if you apply online to a specific company. And in addition, on your LinkedIn profile, you should have words relating to your industry and your profession multiple times as well. That's how I search resumes on LinkedIn. If you put in in LinkedIn, if you search HR recruiter or HR consultant, I come up in the first three to five people because I work that profile constantly. Well, that's really good. As a matter of fact, um, you have a new article posted on Time to Play, so I'll tell people how to find that really quick. Um, you go on time to play dot com t i m e t o p l a y dot com go to work life balance there's a work life uh tab and mary's there you'll see Mary Simmons in her picture and her article this month is the fifteen biggest mistakes you can make on LinkedIn, which she talks about adding skills to your profile. And this is very important, so I think people should take that time just to go in and read that article really quick because what you just said is extremely important. Um, Thank you. So go ahead. I'm sorry, Michael, you had a thing to add? No, I was just saying um, I know a lot of people in my area here that are definitely out of work and are are working. So you think LinkedIn is a very important tool uh, for looking for jobs? It's a very important tool, Michael. I just want to go back to one thing that Doreen said before I address your question, which is, should you mail resumes in? My answer to that is no. The There's regulatory requirements that HR and companies need to adhere to as far as EEOC, Equal Opportunity Commission. So that's why they push you to advertise, to um, put your resume on line versus mailing it in. The only time I would email a resume versus putting it into the company ATS system, applicant tracking system, is if you know somebody. If you're sending that resume to a company and putting referred by Mary Simmons or somebody that the recruiter is going to know, otherwise apply online. Um, 
But Michael, I want to I want to add one quick thing to you for sure. that as well. In uh, that's the reason for people um, to understand why I, I asked you to be on the site because you know as a small business owner, is that something that I would necessarily know? So if there is, you know, a, an EOC audit or review, I mean, you never know what can happen with these governmental Absolutely. regulatory agencies. These are very important things that we need to know. So thank you for bringing that up, too. And I have said to Mary that we'll have her come back and do a HR requirements for small businesses or businesses in general. So we'll do that at, at uh, probably March. We were talking about that this morning. So. Thank you, um the the half hour does go really fast. We only have like 19 minutes to go. So I want to go through wow. some of these really important bullets. So let's put our little uh, speed skates on here. Um, how do you start your job search? Let's kind of go into that. Well, I think you really have to know what you're looking for and be very specific. So as you go out and look for a position, you have to be specific as to what you're looking for and what types of companies you're looking for. So you really need to do research. You have to say to yourself, okay, what am I best at? And is this, are the skills that I'm best at still something that the industry and the you know workforce is looking for? So let's say you're really good at writing. You were a newspaper writer. Well, I think everybody knows the answer to that one. You have to reinvent yourself. So one of my clients... Uh, that I was doing outplacement for was working, doing writing. He said, okay, what is similar to that? Okay, I'm going to edit online content. Now he's working hmm. for Adobe and making a great living. So that's wow. one thing that you have to do. What's out there in the economy and are, is the positions that I'm looking for something that is popular? What are the companies that are hiring? Read the newspaper, listen to the news, uh, Canon USA is moving to Melville in 2014. Maybe when they move from Lake Success, people that live in Queens or Jersey aren't going to want to go. Maybe Canon's a good place to look because they'll have some turnover. You I also think. want to make sure that you are keeping yourself technically savvy. You want to make sure that you are very proficient at Excel, Word, and even some more sophisticated programs if that's something that your industry is looking for. One of the things, Doreen and Mike, that has really gone away is that middle manager who just managed. Now what I'm finding is all of the employers that are asking me to recruit for them, all the managers, they want to be hands-on and actually functioning because they've gotten rid of that middle manager. So make sure that your technical skills are up to speed. You can take free classes at any Department of Labor office. Excellent. So, as I said, networking is your number one way to get a job. And you can network in two ways. So Michael was asking about LinkedIn, and I have to say I am very, very proficient at LinkedIn and use it every day. I use it to recruit. I use it to advertise webinars that I'm giving, and that's a free way for small business owners to find you and big business owners to find job seekers. So make sure that your profile is 100% and utilize LinkedIn at least a couple times a week so that you can tell your network that you're out there and remind them of the skills that you have. The other way, obviously, the network is in person, Doreen, and I really feel that it's a very valuable thing for job seekers to do to meet with other job seekers because they know where the jobs are, to meet with recruiters, to meet with individuals that they know that are working in companies that they want to work for, and focus on information, Doreen, not do you have a job, do you have a job, do you have a job. You want the individuals that are meeting with you to continue to meet with you, and you want to make sure that you have a give back. Tell them some information when you meet with them besides just picking their brain. Well, this so, is very important. I, I agree with thank that. You. you know, a lot of networking events, um, people don't have that reciprocal uh, right. thing. So I think that that's hugely important. Um, what type of networking events, like where do you even start to look for one that would help you? Let's say um, 
you work in a specific industry, like pick an industry that you know that's kind of hopping right now. Well, I think um, IT is always something, it's an area that's always hiring, and it's an area that actually for recruiters and companies, it's very difficult to hire specific IT people. ListNet is a very big organization on Long Island that deals with IT, the IT profession, and it is very, very good. They have excellent speakers. You can just Google search it. Another organization that I think is very good for individuals and companies alike is the Hopog Industrial Association. And although they're in Hopog, they really are very wide reaching for Long Islanders. There are big companies there, there are small companies, and there are individuals. And by going and networking there, you're going to meet some some individuals and hiring managers that can possibly give you a position in the future. For women, there's a lot of different women's groups. I actually run Women's Innovative Network out of the Cold Spring Harbor Library, and we have gotten people jobs, and small businesses have gotten business from our networking group, I'm very proud to say, and I know, Doreen, you're a member, and I yeah. think you can agree that it's a it's a uh, – important group to be a member of. Well, you have a fabulous group of people that are part of it, absolutely. Now, if they're not on Long Island, because, you know, like we have talked about, you know, with the podcast, somebody could be in Japan or, right, you know, right. any place Sorry, else. Listening. I apologize. No, no, that's quite fine. You know, it's really hard to start to find. There is a networking group. Everybody has their own networking group. So how do you right. even start to determine which is the right one to go into and we do have a whole bunch of other things on our list so we have to be fast <laughs> so i think networking groups you want to talk to your colleagues and ask when you're networking i would google search networking groups in your area there are national networking groups for uh there's tang for it people fang for financial executive networking group and those are uh national and there's meng marketing executive networking group, and those are national groups. Wow, that's very cool. You can also look up events and networking groups on LinkedIn, and you could start your own networking group. That's fabulous. Very, very good information. That should be a great idea. No, absolutely. So um, the next kind of bullet that we have is, is look at companies, not jobs. So is that actually still true? Like if you really want to work for a specific organization and they might not have a job available for you at this very moment, do you, you still kind of look towards a company versus looking for available positions? Absolutely, Doreen. I think you have to approach it from both ways, obviously. Look for the positions and apply online as well as looking at the companies. My suggestion is that you make a list of 50 to 100 target companies. It's as easy as Google searching them. Google is really your friend when you're in job search. When I did outplacement for a nonprofit, I did it did the work for them. I Google searched nonprofits in their area. I came up with a hundred companies. They're not all going to be perfect, but a lot of times, as far as you know speaking from a recruiting standpoint, sometimes I meet a person I don't have an opening for them, but they're so good and so qualified, like I'm sure most of your listeners are, that when I have an opening, I go right to them before I even advertise the job. Do you know that that's really funny? That's how I got my first real job. I had See, applied for it something. It, 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 it truly did. I applied for something, of course, on a paper resume because I don't think there were even computers then. But <laughs> I had <laughs> gone and I had given my resume and I had talked to the HR, you know, uh, director, and I did not get the position. I was really kind of crushed. But what she did was something had come up like months, months later. And she called me, and she's like, I have this great position. I didn't call you for the last one because you were too good for that one. But this one came along, which was really fantastic. And you're 100% right on that because it does work. And even though people might think that it might not or they didn't get a job, it's not a hopeless situation. It could be something that comes out. Question, you keep saying outplacement. 
what exactly does that entail in these outplacement searches? So if I'm looking for a job, do I come to your organization? Like, how does that work? What is what is the we, meaning of and, and the, you know, what you guys of do? Of outplacement. Thank, thank you. That's a good question, uh, and I'm sorry that that was unclear. When organizations downsize, they will often come and ask me to do outplacement, which means I teach them how to get a job. So I go in and I do targeted interviewing skills. I help them construct their resumes. I help them get in touch with recruiters. I help them with their online search, et cetera. We do do that for individuals as well. I actually have somebody coming in at 2 o'clock today where I privately coach them on how to get a job. So that's what outplacement is. But I am uniquely qualified to do it in that I'm a recruiter. So I'm in touch with other recruiters, and I also have my opening. So I'm not a recruiting firm, as you said earlier. We do everything HR. But when it comes to that outplacement piece, being a recruiter does help do that. And there's other, I'm not the only game in town. There's plenty of other rec- uh, recruiters and outplacement firms out there. So how does somebody find a, an organization like yours? Because I think that, you know, they just Google outplacement firm or they Google yes. human resource recruiter. They just, you just Google search outplacement if you need the help with your resume and your interviewing skills and actually how to get started. If you have all of that in place, then you would go to a recruitment firm. Because to be honest with you, Doreen, you kind of, as I said before, have to utilize all the different job search techniques. You have to network. You have to use a recruiting firm. In my mind, you should be applying online. You should be going to job fairs. Even for the executives that are listening, a job fair can be a connection to a recruiter that may be there for their lower-level positions, but when they see you, connect you with a higher-level executive position that you're seeking. It gets you out of the house. It gets you talking. Absolutely fabulous. Um, What do you mean by consider part-time or consulting work? Why would somebody do that? Well, as the market has changed, and we all know it's changed, companies are shy to hire individuals, and especially with the health care reform mandates coming out, they might not want to hire full-timers. So where consulting work was 5% of the job market is moving to 30% of the job market in the next 10 years. So it may be a consideration for those listening A, with a consulting position, you're probably getting a higher rate of pay, even though you're not getting any of the benefits, but you do get to set your own hours. That's a requirement of a consultant. It is usually a short-term assignment, so there is a downside there, but you're learning. It's something to put on your resume. It's something to talk about in an interview rather than just saying, I've been looking for a job. I've been consulting while I've been looking for a job, and part-time really has the same some of the same benefits. Well, that's fabulous. Michael, you've been really quiet if you're still around. I'm just I'm mentioning. I, you know, <laughs> no, I know. I have a completely <laughs> different, Mary and, and Doreen, I have a completely different industry. I work in the service industry. Um, I do have a position myself right now, but like you said, um, I'm also looking to upgrade where, what I'm doing. Um, being a makeup artist for 35 years, I had worked with a very, very good firm for 17 of those years, which then unfortunately went out of business. So in the interim, I've been with another company. And, I, you know, in the meantime, I've been searching too. So this information has been vital to me, I think. Oh, well, thank this you. Is, this is probably one of the best podcasts and, we've done with information. And, Mary, we need to Not talk, to insult any of my other professionals, <laughs> but they all have their – Fabulous um, information and no joke, everybody's got. But this is so pertinent to the strife of people today. Absolutely. You know, it's it's fabulous. I have um, a, another, uh, and uh, by the way, let me just reiterate that, no disrespect to any of my people because every single person has something to offer somebody that can help them have a better life. Um, let's just go into the very last thing because we only have five minutes left. Uh, sure. How can people look for a position or get a position or find some leads if they volunteer? 
Well, first of all, I just get on my soapbox for one second that we should all be volunteering. It really is all of our civic duty. But if we look at it from a narcissistic point of view, volunteering is a great networking opportunity. Besides that, you might end up working for that organization. So when the economy was bad, we all know that the not-for-profits or non-profits were hit very hard. So they maybe only had volunteer experience, but... Speaking of a marketing individual, I had a client that was a marketing individual, did marketing for a not-for-profit. They offered her a full-time position, and she took it. Wow. Besides the fact they might teach you some skills that you weren't really good at, so maybe you're not great at Excel, and they have somebody who's good at Excel but needs help doing it, that person will train you at Excel, and now you can put that on your resume. True. Very true. So, you know, yeah. everything that we do has a result in, you know, something, whether we meeting the people or we have, you know, connections or, I mean, if we put into perspective, you know, we all kind of know how to do this. We just have to really focus on. But the points that you made were very, very fabulous. I really think that would be very helpful for, Thank you. for people. Um, okay, so give us a, like, quick start like two-minute or last quick start, what do we do today if we're looking for a job? If you're looking for a job today, the first step is to get your resume in order. So your resume needs to be in line with the jobs that you're looking for. I suggest that you take the the ad, put it right next to your resume, highlight on your resume where your skills are shown that are the skills they're looking for. If there's not a lot of highlights, you need to change your resume. So if they're looking for that lean certification, if they're looking for management skills, and you don't state that in your resume, those words don't even show up on your resume, you need to add to your resume. So the resume is your communications piece. From a marketing standpoint, it is your marketing brochure. That needs to be in line right away. And I would have try to have a professional look at it, although I know that's, that can be costly, minimally have others su- look at it that are in similar industries. And there are resources like in the you know labor uh, offices around and, and things. There are resources Definitely. for people. Absolutely. So if you want somebody to review your resume, that might be something worthwhile. Mary, how do people contact you if they want to do so? They can get me, I think, via email is the best way, and that's M Simmons S I M M O N S at P M P Peter Mary Paul H R dot com. Excellent. And Mary's email is also on the bottom of her professional resource page at time to play dot com. Again, go to Mary Simmons in work life balance. That, that tab, and you'll see Mary Simmons there. And read her articles because she's got a whole bunch of them there that might really help you in your, you know, in your job search and in your business. So I want to thank both of you guys for being part of this, as usual. Thank um, you for having me. No, absolutely. You know what? The, the goal of the Time to Play project is people helping people. That's the ultimate, ultimate goal. We all have something to offer that can help somebody else. And what TimeToPlay.com's Empower Half Hour does is I have one of our professionals from the Time to Play project every single week coming to uh, provide us with tips to empower us and to give us the ability to take our life back. Um, For people that don't know, the Time to Play philosophy is you have to be happy, healthy, have money, and a work-life balance Mm -hmm. to have quality of life. And our goal is to provide resources for you so you can have a better life. And um, the podcasts basically go now the first Wednesday of the the month um, from 9.30 to 10 Eastern, and it is recorded, as people know, uh, is a health topic. Uh, The second Wednesday is a happiness topic. The third Wednesday is a have money topic. The fourth is a work-life balance topic. And today is the fifth Wednesday. And... I wanted Mary to come and do this one with us because this is really a quality of life issue. If you don't have a job or if you're not happy in your job, change it. Change it. Great. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who's listening. And I hope you guys get empowered. (laughs) (laughs) It's time to enjoy your life. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.